Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to the Painting with Commentary video for the Nozzle's Marvelous Miniatures Young Silver Dragon from episode 18 of Paint to Life, which you can find in the link in the top corner if you missed the story episode. Otherwise, let's get this guy going. The water effects product from Woodland Scenics. That's the waterfall effect. It's the very first thing we do out of the gate. Put it on some kind of wax paper, baking paper that won't stick. You can put it on there and it will take, I don't know, 36 hours to dry. So this will be the first step you do. We will need those ropes later. It comes out like caulking, but it is drying clear. And those will make up the base of our waterfall. And I use about three times as many as you see there. And here's a picture of them drying on the wax paper. Um, yeah, this, was, this whole video is about waiting, as you'll see. So, out of the box, the Silver Dragon's wings were very tight. And I wasn't super much a fan. It'd be hard to paint in there. I reshaped them a little bit not too crazy I did like the sculpt I liked his long neck and the way he's kind of looking off to the left and it kind of gave me a, the idea for this dragon poking his head through the waterfall and I thought that would be a cool theme to play with which is of course what I did for the episode and how this mini is gonna go down so a little bit of shaping again use a hairdryer something that's not too hot that's a, a jamberry nail product applicator my wife had you don't want it to burn but you do want it to melt the plastic and direct sunlight will even do it as I found out when I was leaving this guy out to dry in the sun or expedite the clearing process of the water effect but see how now those wings are nice and flat give it a kerplunk in the ice cold water and that will stay that way for a while and permanently for the most part okay mechanist standard gray it's the first color so we have this nice Vallejo primed gray dragon I know these Vallejo people complain about their primers being really thick and goopy and um you know, that is true. I know that some other um, mini painters like um, Leif over at Devs and Dice, he puts these things in his sonic cleaner to clean the primer off of them first sometimes. I don't have a sonic cleaner. And frankly, I personally find for these big miniatures, you can, um, they're big enough that the primer doesn't really gunk up the fine details. I know that for the small Modrons, it was some a little noticeable and I had to do a little bit more prep work. For mold line removal and the like, but for the big guys, I don't find it a big deal. So right, on, right into the gray we go. And why gray? Well, it's a silver dragon and you don't just want to throw the metallic right on the light gray. You want to start with like a dark undercoat. Um, and it, even though this is a layer paint, it will still be a good start for the metallics, which are going to come later. So that underneath will be nice and dark for us. So after we do the gray, we're going to move to the wing folds and the uh, we're using rust gray, which is a very blue gray. And you can really see it when it's compared to this McKenna standard gray. I mean, that looks like a blue color. And in fact, I might even store rust gray on my shelf in the blue section. But when it's by itself on a stone, you'd say that's gray. But seeing it here, geez, that looks blue. But anyways, so if we look at the source art from the player's handbook, I'm sorry, I'm sorry the monster's manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, we'll see that the, and I'm going to drop a little marker here to come back and throw a screenshot and you can take a look and see their wings have a very blue like hue to them. So that's why I decided that this is where we're going to want to uh, go with. Don't worry so much about being super close and perfect here. Well, you, you should if you're making a pure dragon if you're following my recipe we're going to be covering up most of this so you know always be neat it's a good practice to get your brush hand steady but in the case of this tarnished dragon especially on his ass like we're at here it's not the end of the world if you clip a little bit of the gray because we're gonna be all over this like white on rice pretty soon but if you're gonna make a true silver dragon then yeah be neat and tidy and and it's going to work out great but that's a really good color scheme to start off our dragon those are the two main colors so next apothecary white this is a contrast paint i use a lot of contrast in this project especially on the base in fact i i don't know i thought i was going to be clever and just use all contrast paints on the base and i think i almost did apothecary white is one of my favorite contrast paints as then it goes on really transparent and it dries not white but almost like a dusty gray and it just gives anything that's supposed to be cloud-like or air-like a cool gray wispy effect. And if you put it on white, it highlights all those details, but it's transparent, so it dries and you still see that beautiful rust gray through the apothecary white. So there it goes on the wing webbing. Next, Basilanium Gray. This is another contrast paint I have. This step is omittable. 
if you don't have this paint or any type of contrast, you could use a, a like a null oil to get the same kind of effect. I just wanted to further darken that gray. So this Baselini and gray, it's going to dry in the in the scale folds, um, nice and dark. So for later when I dry brush it, it will keep those dark contrast like undertones. Um, but if you had any like of a null oil, non, non oil, you wouldn't have to use this uh, paint. And notice I left his chest plate the standard mechanized gray. I didn't paint this over his chest scales because I'm I had a different plan for the chest scales. So here I am. And like I said, I don't even think this step is 100% necessary, but it worked out for me. So next, we're going to use Iron Warriors as a dry brush. It's not a dry brush paint, but make sure you soak a lot of it off your brush and you're going to have a nice dry brushing to the scales. Now, that's going on top of the Mechanis Gray and the Basilian Gray we just put on. And it looks pretty thick, actually, in my video here. I could probably zoom in on that a little bit to take a better look, uh, if I remember to. Let's put a marker. Uh, it looks pretty thick, but in actuality, it's really not. It is just a dry brush. It's just you got three grays. Oh, I did zoom in. What a good boy. <laughs> so you can see, um, yeah, you got three different grays working there, and they're doing their thing. And if this was just a standard silver dragon, it's already looking great. Maybe a little dark, but you'd probably want to build up to that silver. If you go balls in straight to the really sh strong, like, uh, silver metallic paint, you don't have anywhere to go down from, right? If you start dark, you can build up the light. You, it's hard to build down the dark without making it completely dark like black. Okay, next step. This is my treat. This is Agaro's Dunes Contrast mixed with some contrast medium. Now you could use water, but I use the contrast medium because I had it and I think it thins it better and a little more controlled. This is one of my favorite contrast paints, Agros Dunes. I've used it on the Blue Dragon, I used it here. What it does is it makes a cool brown yellow. And because that, that thinning agent I added, and like I said, you could use water, if you have the thinning medium, it thins it out so that it's almost transparent. So see, I'm applying this pretty liberally. If you were just putting Agros Dunes out of the bottle, that'd be going on like brown. But see how it looks quite washed and I'm spreading it around quite a bit. I'm trying to get the effect of tarnished silver and tarnished silver isn't that dark. See that the wing there? Now, um, not everywhere. See, I, I let it pool and get a little darker around the creases and the folds and the underarm and the underwing. But on the top parts of the wing sail, I spread it around. See, see, I'm, I'm spread, spread, spread. A little bit goes a long way because you don't want edge of the wing to be super dark you want it to be just real light see how light it is on the outside but on the tail and under the arm there it's almost like a gold yeah I like it I was really proud of that not to toot my own horn I was proud of myself for coming up with this for the tarnished effect if you look at what tarnished silver looks like google that shit that's what tarnished silver looks like right there it's kind of a brown but because it's transparent and all the other colors we built up so far are showing through that almost looks like you could have pass that off as like a bronze dragon and we could have painted it this way instead of using the bronze paints that we used for our for Kalina Lady of the Blue in our bronze dragon episode uh, whatever that was go subscribe to paint the life if you're not a subscriber it's when it's what all the cool kids are doing these days <laughs> so as you see um, now I know my thought is his neck is going through the waterfall which is cleaning him of his tarnish so I'm not painting it on his head or his neck because I know it's going to be disappeared from there but I am applying a little bit more a little liberally and all those cool wing folds that he has in that uh, I'm going to eventually hit with another dry brush later uh, in the in the folds along the neck again looks super good this is one of my favorite dragons so far okay here we are rune fag steel rune fang steel if that sounded like it was something else it wasn't i'm just kind of a slippy talker when i'm doing this live rune fang steel again it's not a dry brush paint but just applying it as dry brush i'm applying it to his head see the difference between the head and the neck versus his shoulders and his back it one looks silver one looks tarnished and then once you do the rune fang we hit the storm host now the storm host silver is a metallic paint it's super super silver once you put this on, there's no going back. Once you've put this on, it is as silver as it's going to get, okay? If you're trying like non-metallic metal, you wouldn't use this sort of stuff, but I'm putting this as like a highlight on top of that rune fang to amplify his cheekbones, his horns, his little goatee, the uh, nape of his neck there with those sails and those spikes running up the sails. Now they say that the horns get 
darker at the end to a tip and I don't know if I filmed this but I'll go back to the rune fang and then iron warriors and you know gun metal with uh, the tip being like a null oil so that the, the, the horn itself has a cool um, darkening effect at the back but see on the shoulder blade here where the water is splashing I'm just painting the storm hole silver anywhere it touches the tarnish just like disappears all right, now Golden Griffin Dry, that's a step I'm not showing, but the Stormhole Silver on his neck scales, like the bottom part under his neck, I dry brushed on a very gentle Golden Griffin just to give that underscale a kind of brownie look. All right, so that's it. We're on to Polystyrene Foam XPS for the base. A little bit of craft paint to paint it. I'm not going to go crazy with basing it with Citadel because there's a lot to cover there and you might need a couple layers, but the craft paint's free pretty much, right? Um, so polystyrene is now my favorite basing material because I used to build up with Milliput and stuff and I still could, but it's so easy if you have a hot wire cutter to cut a shape. And as you can see, I've got a crevice and I've got my waterfall little pool. Everything is set for how I wanted to do it. And as I told you, I painted this with all contrast. So we start with Aramath Air Aethermatic Blue. It's really pretty blue. It looks very cyan-y, kind of like um, teal. But you know what? Ice looks like that. That's what ice, that's what frozen ice water looks like, right? If the sun is hitting it. So I, I layered it. I start there. Now Black Templar at the bottom of that abyss, I want it to look like a chasm. So start with the black. Then I use the Griff Charger Gray, which is like a blue gray. These are all contrast paints. So now I blue gray on top. And then I'm going to switch up to uh, Ultramarines Blue, I believe is next. Yep, which is a pretty terrible contrast paint in its own right. But in this case, it was really, really good. Make sure you shake your contrast paints well, guys. And Talisar Blue, this is the blue that pretty much does the rest. Um, back to that shaking comment. If you ever see that white film in the bottom of your contrast paint, you haven't shaken it well enough. Shake, 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 shake. Shake it like a Polaroid picture, all right? If you don't have little iron mixing balls, I don't use them. I just shake the shit out of it. And sometimes it's still there. I put an old scrubby brush and just stir the pot, right? Stir, 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 stir. Make sure it all gets blended in. It's part of the whatever. I don't know what the hell it's for, but it's part of it. You got to make sure you get it. Now, because it's a contrast paint, it's settling into the foam in different areas. It looks so cool. Like, it doesn't have to be uniform. You don't want it to be. I was a little concerned that that top blue, as much as I loved it, it didn't look as good as the other blue. Like, it almost now looks like some kind of weird, I don't know, like, highlighted area in a video game. But once you start, because they're still sort of wet, once I start touching them, see? Look at that wet blend to blend the two together. Oh, I was like, oh yeah, this is going to work. Look at that. A little bit of the Talisar blue mixed with that one on top. And the next thing you know... You have a sheet of ice that's being illuminated by sunlight and it's tr it's transparent and then the, the other part is too thick so it's just regular blue and there we go now the pool again talisar blue that's going to be the pool for the waterfall and now you have yourself an ice base prior to dry brushing i have some still photos that are going to come up here we'll look at oh yeah and i paint the side of it too good idea so here's what it looked like prior to the dry brushing and it's got the popsicle stick or whatever in there. We'll get to that. See, not bad, eh? The contrast paint dries and gives it all kinds of details in the foam. Uh, again, you can make more etching. That was just me being a pretty sloppy cutter, but it works perfect. Like It doesn't have to be super straight lines when it's supposed to be organic. Okay, dry brushing. It's called, um, what is it? Prax yeah, Praxetti White. Very cool step. You just dry brush this glacier. And I like to use my hand as my little palette there by applying this dry brush all over on these hard lines and even gently across some flat surfaces it really starts to look like a piece of ice i like the blues before you can see they're all dried now actually that crevice is still pretty wet it looks like that's okay see a little bit of dusting of this dry brush on those edges and now you're like holy christ that could be a piece of ice uh, remember guys um i'm a newbie painter like um I'm not the greatest. I just do stuff. Sometimes I do it on camera because I have to make a Paint to Life episode every week. So you get what you get and you don't get upset, right? It's like we tell our kids. Um, I just like it. Just just go with it, man. No one's. I'm not entering in any crystal brush awards anytime soon. It doesn't matter. It's not what this hobby is about. This hobby is about you having a great time and putting something out that you will be proud of. And your players, if you're a DM, will absolutely shit a brick when you drop that on the table.
You've painted something to life. It was a piece of XPS polystyrene foam, and now it looks like the top of a glacier. That's probably melting somewhere in the world <laughs> right now. Oh, I'm such a cynic. What can I say? It's good fun. Yeah, uh, sort of. So again, um, on there it is on the side. I'm super happy. I'm like, this is going to work. All right, next, we're making a waterfall, a vertical waterfall. So yeah, yeah, hot glue gun, glue in your dude for the center. Now, plastic flower card holder, that's the secret. Those things that hold the cards and flowers, I glued it together. Now, unfortunately, I didn't use clear hot glue. That's why it's yellow, but I can fix that later. But see how that little structure I made? That is the structure that's gonna hold our waterfall. Now, realistic water taped off to make the little pond. And back to our water effects once the pond dries. We're gonna apply it down here and use a brush to tease it up because those are your rapids, right? Like that's where your gushing water is hitting. So that's also gonna dry clear. This is what I used in Clean Lady of the Blue as well to make the shoreline effects. It dries clear, and if you make it look splashy, it dries splashy, and then you can paint it to look like water later. I use this little turkey baster thing I had to put bubbles in the water because normally you don't want bubbles in that water, but in this case I did. Oh yeah, hi Mr. Dragon, see you hanging on my rack. He's like, hey, see in the background all those ropes that we made earlier? They're nice and dry now, and we are going to use them. So, here was my first attempt. I used the liquid water or the water effects as the glue. I stood it upright and I draped these things over top of it, right? Because that's going to work, right? Nope. Gravity's like, piss on you, Mike. That's not going to work. I don't know what you thought. It was, and then I'm starting to panic. Like, oh my God, the whole thing is my waterfall. It's not going to work, right? Well... Doesn't GMA Tank say, you know what, piss on gravity, we're going to just put it on its back and let gravity work for us instead of against us. So I put it on its side, and you can see it's got some two-sided tape on the left on a box and something propping it up. And now I put the glue, like that water effect on the top, and I just start to lay out the ropes. And here they come. One at a time. You don't need to do tons because we're going to do something later to fill in the water. What you are going to want to do though is put enough of them. This is like those old bead, you know, in the, the 70s when everyone had beads in their house that were like curtains made of beads connecting the rooms. But that's okay. Just laying them all out like this. But this is the worst part. And I got it on camera and you'll see. So I'm spending all this time, I'm being very... See, I'm adding more water effect to the top there, at the top of the waterfall, that's like a glue. When it hits these things, it's not like a, a bonding glue. Uh, it just holds them in place and it'll dry, they'll all be transparent, and watch watch this. You know, it's coming. I maybe was a little too premature, so let's distract you a little bit with a little click. There we go, click's gone, watch this. And then my fat hand, here it comes. You ready for this? Boom! I slammed it with my hand and they all got knocked off. So I had to start all over again. And that, there you go, that was the big oops of the, of, the, of the video. That was like 20 minutes worth of work lost. So this is round two. Looks really good though. I've got all the ropes in place. I put all this water effect on the top. That's going to dry and hold them all in place. They're taped up. They're a little long, but that's okay. The next step will help with that. Don't worry about them being long on the top. You want them to be kind of jagged. Okay, here's a picture from the side. You can see the, the ropes they're drawing and they kind of go up and where they're stuck with the double-sided tape. Mm -hmm. And there's it from the front. See how long they are, like long dreads. When it's dry, I put it upright. But we're gonna clip those, clip them to size. That's the next step. So now that they're all dried, they look like uh, noodle, like pasta. Just straight, like untangle them if they're tangled up cut them make sure you cut them long enough that they drape into the water you don't want them to be short it's waterfall yeah it's hitting that water it's hitting that water effect shit we did earlier to look like splashes so each one of these i'm i'm pulling out i'm cutting to length i'm kind of untangling them and i'm also kind of draping them around the dragon's neck i want to make sure that i've got full coverage yeah uh, there's a long one so i kind of feel it out cut it cut it cut it cut it cut it it's really cool. I'm thinking to myself, this will work, right? I have to film in three days. This will be ready, right? <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Go hard or go home, right? It'll work or it won't, but everyone will love the try. So I drape them around, and now this part. 
gloss varnish, the, the head of the dragon sticking out, coat and gloss because it's completely wet, right? And even though it's already shiny and silver, by putting the gloss varnish on top of the Liquitex product, it'll look even more wet when it's finished. Although not as wet as I thought it would, probably because the, the silver already shines so much. What more do you want, right, Mike? So. You put the varnish on, put some liberally around the base. It's supposed to be ice, that glacier, so I put some on the base so it would be also shiny. And um, next, we are going to use, we're going to complete the waterfall effect, all right? So using water effect and a scrubby brush, I now paint all those ropes together in this white slimy. All those ropes basically act as my um, structure. And now I paint this stuff on liberally, okay? All the way down to the bottom, as you see. And here's another angle of it. See how goopy it looks? But that's cool because that looks like water. Tease it a little bit with your brush to make it look like wavy. Here it is drying. And you can see, I was trying to see how it's creamy as it's drying. It dries clear, but this was day two and it still hadn't dried. So I set this little square up with a hairdryer. <laughs> see that? It's the magic, the behind the scenes pictures of Paint to Life. It's a hairdryer running for like two hours trying to get that to dry quicker. But guess what? 36 hours later, I left it outside two days in direct sun. Finally though, it's dried clear. There's still a little bit of that cream in there, but that's okay. There's the effect you want. And if you're looking for something to be done for a Paint to Life video, then maybe it's not the project for you. But if you have lots of time, there it is. Finished product time, boys. Inside the mouth, and ladies, sorry, I didn't mean to forget you. Inside the mouth, I also hit with the dollop of that contrast blue from the top of the iceberg to represent his kind of ice breath. Here it is. There's the rapids. There's, we can see our cool tarnish effect. See his mouth is kind of glowing with that blue on his tongue. And... I also dry brush gently some blue and white onto the clear waterfall because water isn't completely clear. I mean, I kind of regretted that later. If I could do it again, I wouldn't have painted the water. It was very light. It's very subtle, but it's there. And I, whatever. See his shoulders? Anywhere I wanted to look like water had splashed, I put a dab of storm hose silver, which completely hid that tarnish effect and made it look like he was wet. Now his backside is almost completely tarnished. This picture wasn't in the video, but look at him from the back. His wings are nice in that yellowy brown. His look at that, look at that crud. And see, oh yeah, this is a cool dragon. And finally, the final shot from the side, his arm bar and his his arm. There it is. All right, folks, that's it for this episode. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. I would definitely do this again. Ooh, one final thought. I did also add some technical uh, blizzard Valhalla and blizzard paint to make snow on the glacier I figured you guys would know how to do that yourselves you can either use snow or sand painted white or whatever um, I just forgot to include it in this video so I hope you're all having a good day I hope you're all staying safe thank you for watching this video please subscribe if you haven't share this video to help grow the channel I'm GMA tank and we'll see you on Saturday